How would it feel if we were confined and we couldn't leave the street that we live on? <laughs> Pretty limiting, right? Well, a computer has that same problem if it does not have a default gateway. It's confined just to that local area network that it lives on. However, we are giving our computers and devices a default gateway, usually via DHCP. And if we want to have fault tolerance for the default gateway, we are going to use a technology in the family of FHRP, the first hop redundancy protocols. It basically means you're going to have two or more devices that are providing that first hop or that default gateway functionality for our devices. So in this video regarding HSRP, that's the hot standby router protocol, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the big picture of what that does and most importantly, give you some hands-on practice in a free packet tracer lab so you can not only understand it, but you also have some experience by doing the lab of configuring and verifying that HSRP works. So here's the game plan for HSRP, one of the first top redundancy protocols. And that is we can have Bob the user right here. And instead of having Bob use a default gateway of dot one, or that's router one, or dot two, which is router two, we can go ahead and simply have Bob use a virtual IP address like dot 12. And then we train these routers on these interfaces that they should support that IP address of dot 12. So maybe R1 is the active router. And what that means is R1 is going to do the work on behalf of dot 12 and also the layer two MAC address behind the scenes. And if this router goes away or blows up, then it's R2 that will go active and continue to support that dot 12 address, which is Bob's default gateway, and also the associated layer two address beneath that. And what I'd love to do is have you do this hands-on lab in Packet Tracer to reinforce that. Oh, I almost forgot. Let me share with you where we can go to download this specific Packet Tracer lab. We would simply go to this address, thekeithbarker.com. There's a link for it in the description below, and then simply scroll down to the download section. And as we scroll down to downloads, there's one right here called Cisco PT HSRP Lab 2020-0626. So you can go to thekeithbarker.com, download this Packet Tracer Lab, and then start to practice. Now, if you don't yet have Packet Tracer, the application, you can get it for free from netacad.com. Go to netacad.com, sign up with a free account, and then you can download the actual application Packet Tracer for free. So you can go ahead and practice with this lab. And if you're wondering, hey, what does this lab actually look like? Let's take a look. And it's gonna look like this. So here's our PC over here on the 10.1.0.100 address on the 10.1 network. Over here is our server, 10.4.0.10. And then I've got routing completely set up all the way from end to end. Our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to work with these two interfaces on router one and router two, which are gig zero zero on both of them, and set up a virtual IP address of dot 12 to support PC, this PC with a default gateway of dot 12. And then on the server side over here on the 10.4 network, I'd like you to use gig zero one on routers five and six instead of a virtual IP address of dot, let's use 56 as a default gateway that the server can use. And that way, if we tell the server to use that address, we tell the PC to use that address, then we have some fault tolerance because one of the routers will be active and the other will be standby. So if one goes down, the other one can go ahead and pick up the slack and become active and continue working on behalf of the default gateway address that's in use. So to get us started, let me go ahead and do the 10.1 network on the left-hand side of the topology. And then you can do uh, the 10.1 side and the 10.4 side when you download this packet tracer lab and do the hands-on yourself. So with our plan in place, let's go to router one and let's go to the CLI. And here at the CLI, let's go into configuration mode for interface gig zero, zero. And we're going to say standby and let's go ahead and use standby group number one. And the IP we're going to use is 10.1.0.12. And let's also go ahead and specify for that group that we want to use preemption. That means whoever has the highest priority, if they're both up, will take over the role of active. Let's also for that group specify that router one should have a priority higher than the default of hundred. Let's go to 105. Boom. And in just a few moments, uh, as this device discovers there's no other standby router there, it will become active. We should see a console message in just a moment. In Packet Tracer, this is so cool. If you can't wait, you can go ahead and click down here on the bottom left and click on the little time lapse option, and that will fast forward time for you. So if you go back to the router, it's now active. Fantastic. Let's also go to router two and configure it as well on its gig zero zero. So here on router two at the CLI, we'll go into configuration mode for interface gig zero slash zero. And here we're going to do the same commands, except I'm going to leave the priority at the default of 100. So we'll do a standby was group one and the IP was 10.1.0.12 and standby one, we are going to go ahead and use preempt. 
So after a few moments, if we do a show standby, uh, this guy is still figuring out life. That's okay, we'll give him just a moment. We can also click on the fast forward time button down here, one of my favorite features in Packet Tracer. And if we do a show standby again, it's saying that this current router, this interface is standby. The virtual IP address is this. The virtual MAC address associated with that virtual IP address is this. That last number, 01, represents the group number. So if it was group five, it would end in a five here. And it's saying the active router is at 10.1.0.1. Great, that's our one's address. And that we, us ourselves, the local router, are standby and our default priority is 100. Fantastic. So to test this, what we could do is go up to router one and I'm going to save this config. And then we're gonna to go to the physical view and I'm gonna power off router one. Boom, there you go. So what we need to be aware of is that routing protocols do take a little bit of time to converge. So I'm gonna give it a few moments for that to all happen. And then if we go back to the PC and, or go to the PC and on the PC, let's change the default gateway from whatever it is, go to configure and settings. Currently it's set to dot one, let's set it to dot 12. So it has a default gateway that's being supported. And let's go to the desktop. Then we'll go to a command prompt. And here at the command prompt, let's do an IP config. Just to verify our default gateway is 10.1.0.12. It is, that's great. And let's go ahead and do a ping to the server address at 10.4.0.100. And we might have some ARPs in the path that have to get resolved. That's current, that's perfectly normal for a first ping. And I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna hit the fast forward button here a few times just to speed up time. And let's do that again. 10.4.0.100. Oh, that's not its IP address. That would explain it. 10.4.0.10 is what we're after. So I'll do a control C and we'll ping the right address. And we had a little bit of a timeout from the ARP and then we have uh, full hits every time. And we can also do a trace, T-R-A-C-E-R-T. -E so that's the way we spell it in Windows, trace RT. Then we can go to server one, which is gonna resolve to that same address. And it's going from .2, .4, .6, .10, fantastic. So now that I've demonstrated that on the R1, R2 side of the house for the benefit of PC1, I'd love you to do similar treatment for the benefit of the server on the right-hand side of our topology. But you know what else? I'd like to show you one additional really important real-world aspect regarding HSRP, and that is tracking. I wanna share with you the problem it solves and then add this option of tracking into the mix. So let's go back to R1, and I'm gonna power that bad boy back on. So it's powering on. I'll hit the fast forward button a few times. Great, great, great. And here's the problem I'd like us to solve, and that's this. If gig zero slash one itself fails, goes down, R1 really doesn't have the best routing to go ahead and get to this server over here. Instead, what we should do is we should have router two go active and it should forward it. But unfortunately, because gig zero zero is still up and R1 and R2 are talking with these little hello messages saying, I'm here, I'm here. Basically, R2 will never take over. So what we can do is we can tell R1 to go ahead and track gig zero slash one. So in the HSRP configuration on gig zero zero, we say, hey, listen, go ahead and track gig zero slash one. And if it goes down, it's not working anymore. Go ahead and decrement, reduce your priority by 10 points. And then if that happens and we have R2, which now has a higher priority and R2 also is set to preempt, R2 will go active and become the active router instead of having the PC continue to use gig zero zero on R1 as its default gateway. And so to actually see the negative impact of that, let's go to R1 and on R1, we'll go to the CLI and we'll do a config T and we'll do an interface gig zero slash one, not taking down the whole router, just that interface and we'll say shut down. All right, so now that it's shut down, look at the pain and suffering that's gonna go on right here at the PC. So at the PC, if we do an ARP dash A, it knows about the dot 12 address and R1 or R2 is gonna support it. Currently R1, if we looked at R1, it would still be the active router. But if we did a trace out to server one, oh, name res, <laughs> uh, let's do a trace out to the IP address because the DNS server is server one. Let's go to 10.4.0.10 and see how it's trying to go to dot one, that's R1. And then I'm gonna use the fast forward because it's too painful to wait. I'm gonna hit fast forward a few times, go back to the PC and then do the trace again. So it's going to R1, who's now routing it down to R2 because the routing has converged who then sends it on to R3 and R5 and onto the final destination of the server. So if we don't wanna wait for that whole convergence, we just wanna have R2 become the active router. So we save ourselves a hop in the path anyway. Let's go ahead and do that with tracking. So to do that, we can go back to R1 
And let's go back to the interface gig 0 slash 1. We'll bring that up. So now that interface is up. And then we'll go over to interface gig 0 slash 0. Let's do a do show run just to see what we have before we start here. So currently we have our standby configured. We have the preamp, the priority of 105. But let's also in interface gig 0 slash 0, just to verify, let's do a standby 1. And we'll go ahead and do some tracking on gigabit 0 slash 1. Now, if we do a show standby, check this out. Now it says that it's active. Great. The virtual IP address, the virtual MAC address. Great, great, great. But check this out at the bottom. The priority is 105 that we configured. But now because we're doing tracking, it says that if gig 0 slash 1 goes down, we are going to reduce on gig 00, zero the priority by 10. So if it was 105, it'll go to 95. And if it goes to 95 and R2 is set to preempt and it has a default priority of 100, it becomes active. So now with that tracking in place, let's go ahead and shut down gig 01 and take a look at the difference. So we'll go into interface gig 0 slash 1, not dot 1, slash 1, and we'll do a shutdown. And let's do a show standby. So it's currently going through some changes. Here it says the priority is 95. It's configured as 105, but it also explains that gig 01 is down, so we reduced it. So R2 is now active. And as a result, if we go back to the PC and we do a ARP A, it still knows about its default gateway of dot 12 with that MAC address, but this time R2 is the active router. So as the PC sends traffic, it's not going to bother forwarding it to R1, who then has to route it down to R2, who then has to forward it along the path. It'll go directly to R2 because R2 is now the active router. And we can verify that by just sending some traffic. Let's do a trace. There's 10.4.0.10, which is going to R2 based on that last octet, and then to R4, to R5, and finally off to the server. And take a look at this. I'm doing the trace again, but now it's using a different, slightly different path in the middle of the network. And that's because we have multiple equal cost paths from an OSPF perspective. So it's actually load balancing across those multiple paths. But the first top is the one I wanted to focus on, which is dot two, because R2 is now the active router. And that's because it has preempt enabled and it has a higher current priority than R1's gig 00 for HSRP. So there you go, my friends, some theory and some hands-on practice regarding HSRP, the hot standby router protocol. And do me a huge favor. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and click on the thumbs up button, let other people know. And if you've done the lab, when you've completed the lab, go ahead and leave a comment below just saying, I did it. I'd like to root for you and congratulate you on helping to build your skills and get better and better and better. And with that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video or live event. Have a great day.